don't pick that life, that life picks you. Welcome to Sit Down News, and before I begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor. Ratchet is a clothing company from the UK, started by a young man with a vision, a dream, and determination. They have various prints and styles for men, women, and children. I'll include a link to their website down below in the description for this video. To say Joe Gallo disliked his superiors, or in this case his bosses, is nothing new. But I did find something interesting, and if true, Gallo was set up in a big way by an extremely cunning guy. Let's get into it. After Joe Gallo's release from prison in April 1971, the Colombo family, and specifically Joe Colombo, wanted peace. He even offered Gallo money, money that Gallo declined because he felt it wasn't sufficient. The turn of events which took place two months later is significant to the story, but to get there we have to go back in time. In the late 50s, Vito Genovese had ambition to become a boss. He had his eye on a family that once belonged to Lucky Luciano, but was being run by Frank Costello. So on May 2nd, 1957, he sent the young Vincent Chin Gigante to hit Costello. Most of us know Costello survived the hit as the bullet only glanced his head. While the attempt failed, it did spook Costello into asking the commission permission to retire, paving the way for Genovese to take over the family that still bears his name to this very day. Becoming boss was not good enough for Genovese. He wanted more power, but one obstacle remained in his way, and his name was Albert Anastasia. Genovese wanted to eliminate Anastasia first and foremost because he feared retaliation. Anastasia was very close to Frank Costello, who Genovese failed to take out. One theory is Anastasia's days were numbered for ordering the murder of a civilian. Arnold Schuster, a clothes salesman, gave up Willie Sutton, who was a bank robber and a fugitive at the time. Let's punch a big hole in that theory. The mob wouldn't kill Anastasia for ordering the murder of someone they considered a rat. Genovese not only wanted to be boss of his family, he wanted to be the boss of all bosses, and he felt Anastasia held too much power. So he approached someone very close to Anastasia, his underboss, Carlo Gambino. And let me say he took a major gamble that Gambino wouldn't tip his boss off. Many attribute the following quote to Gambino, however it's a play on a Machiavelli quote. You have to be like a lion and a fox. The fox is smart enough to recognize traps, and the lion is strong enough to scare away wolves. Be like a lion and a fox, and no one will ever beat you. And by all means, Gambino was a fox. Genovese's plan was music to Gambino's ears. Eliminating Anastasia gave him the opportunity to step in as boss. What Genovese failed to realize was that Gambino had no problem double-crossing his own boss. He would have no qualms about double-crossing Genovese. According to reports, Gambino orchestrated the Anastasia hit. On October 25, 1957, Albert Anastasia was shot in the barbershop at the Sheridan Hotel in New York City. With Anastasia out of the way, Genovese at a later meeting would agree to Gambino being the boss of the former Anastasia family. A reward the Fox would pay back with further treachery. You see, like Genovese, Gambino had ambitions of becoming the ultimate decision maker in the mob. On July 7, 1958, Vito Genovese was arrested along with Chin Gigante and Carmine Galante for conspiring to sell narcotics. And on April 14, 1959, he was convicted and received a 15-year sentence. It's been reported that an FBI agent, Anthony Consoli, had an informant named Nelson Cantalopes, who was a Puerto Rican drug dealer. Supposedly, he had dealings with Genovese, not directly, but through Genovese's people. Do I think a boss is going to get caught up in a drug indictment with a low-level drug dealer? Absolutely not. Another theory that sounds more accurate is Gambino convinced Costello, which wouldn't take much considering the failed attempt on him, and Maya Lansky, who felt Genovese was too greedy, to pay cantaloupes off. In any case, Genovese would die in prison Valentine's Day 1969. The 70s were an era of protest, and with this in mind, Colombo family boss Joseph Colombo created the Italian-American Civil Rights League. The outspoken Colombo said there was a conspiracy against all Italian-Americans. Inside of a year, the League received the support of many Italian-Americans, politicians, and entertainers. According to reports, memberships reached over 40,000 in its 25 chapters. On June 28, 1971, the League held its second Unity Day rally in Columbus Circle. 
It was during this rally that Jerome Johnson shot Joseph Colombo three times. Colombo survived but remained in a coma for the following seven years. All fingers pointed to Joe Gallo. After all, it was no secret Gallo, a not a fan of authority, had no love for Colombo. In retaliation for the attempt on Colombo, on April 7, 1972, Joe Gallo was gunned down at Umberto's Clam House in Manhattan. On a side note, the restaurant was owned by the parents of Matty the Horse Ionello, a Genovese captain. Permission to shoot Gallo in the restaurant most likely was approved beforehand. What I found interesting was in April of 1988, Tommaso Buschetta appeared before a United States subcommittee. The following is a part of his testimony. You remember when the big American boss, Joe Colombo, was shot in New York City at Columbus Circle. He had been very active in the Italian-American Defamation League and had been getting a lot of publicity. Paolo Gambino saw headlines of Colombo's activities and said to me, he should not be doing this. I knew then that Colombo was a dead man. Five days later, perhaps a week later, Colombo was shot and mortally wounded. The Paolo Gambino he was speaking of was Carlo Gambino's brother. The question remains, did Carlo Gambino use Joe Colombo's publicity to remove him, fully aware all blame would be pointed at Joe Gallo? It was a treacherous and strategic play, only one a fox is capable of. If you enjoyed this video, you could hit the like button, and I appreciate those who do. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you can do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.